Okay, so that was one key step uh, nailed. And the second important reaction that we kind of reinvented, it's stuff from the 70s and we, we put, a, put some life back into it with this beautiful nitromanic lactamization cascade. So there's a nitro group there, it's, it's very hard to see I'm afraid, but the nitro ester, and you just heat that in the presence of a primary amine and formaldehyde in methanol. And it cyclizes beautifully to this, this um, nitro uh, piperidinone uh, heterocycle as a single diastereoisomer. We're stitching in this chain and we're making all of this, uh, this ring in one step, which is very nice. It goes through a, a mechanism something like this. The imine is formed. There's a proton transfer between the acidic nitroalkane and the imine. This is a reactive anion, uh, ion pair. Uh, reversible CC bond formation followed by an irreversible cyclization onto the ester gives us the lactam and then probably a post cyclization epimerization of this position to give us the, the stereocenter there. It works very nicely on large scale. <clears throat> and then at this stage if you realize what we've just done is we've totally exploited the nitro olefin for both the Michael addition and then the nitromanic. Now it's time to remove this and we use AIBN initiator tributyl tin hydride and it just uh, smoothly and tracelessly removes this nitro group to give us this ring system. At that point we need to start doing some reductions and some cyclizations and I'm not going to go through the details but what we found was uh, most hi all hydrides prefer to hit the six ring over the five ring so lithium aluminium hydride delivers one hydride to this carbonyl and then formic acid delivers the second it's a, it's a Lukert reaction or an Eschweiler Clark type reaction to give us the piperidine here and that was rather good we made about one and a half grams of this material and most of that was burnt was burned, burnt, in this step here, uh, trying to reduce down this carbonyl with dibal. Uh, it, it took time, but we managed to, uh, to crack it with a minus 20, 1.6, one hour. This hemiaminal uh, can be quenched and isolated, but it can also be dropped straight into dilute acid and slowly cooked at uh, 90 degrees for 24 hours, which was needed to make the aminium ion and then the furan attacks the minium ion to make this new bond. So what we've got is the pentacyclic core uh, as a single diastereomer. And if you can see what we're up to here, all we've got to do is a ring-closing metathesis to bring these ends together, and we've finished. Remember the problem of the Z-selectivity? Well, when we use Grubbs-1, which was the favoured catalyst for this, this process, um, it did exactly what it did with the other groups. It gave us a 2 to 1 the wrong way. E, Z, 2 for E and 1 for Z. Bad news. The other bad news, we couldn't separate the E from the Z either, which meant we couldn't finish the project. Um, what we did in desperation was screen loads of acids because we were aware that these, this has two amines in this molecule. Amines can be protonated. That will give the salt. The salt may have a different reactivity profile or a different conformation, which could ultimately lead to a change in the selectivity in this, in this metathesis reaction. And we got lucky on that. So with sulfonic acid, it managed to flip the selectivity to two to one the right way. And at that level, we could separate and purify. Okay, so that was kind of the end of this route. It was a, 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 a very short 12 steps to here, which was a factor of three shorter than the other route, which we were very proud of. Uh, 100 MIGs was made, um, all, all pretty good. However, there was one real problem which was shouting at us, which was basically... You know, this last step, bringing the ends of these alkenes together, we, we fixed that with the acid. It wasn't a solution. And if you think about it, from the point of view of a strategy, if you ever wanted to develop a Z-selective ring-closing metathesis catalyst for making macrocycles, this was the perfect platform. So in our hands, basically, it wants to go towards the E-isomer. Uh, our colleagues, Nishida and Kerr, couldn't control the metathesis. So what we did is we started collaborating with... Uh, 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 Amir Haveda and Richard Schrock on the development of catalysts for Z-selective ring-closing metathesis in natural product synthesis. I'm not going to give you the details, uh, it's a long project, but uh, effectively we delivered lots of compounds to Boston and it turns out that this tungsten pyrrolide here is very effective at bringing the ends of these two alkenes together to make this 15-membered ring with very high Z-selectivity, 94%. A good chemical yield and the reaction runs at uh, room temperature very quickly at fairly high concentration. Um, yeah, uh, a very nice collaboration which resulted in this, this catalyst being identified. Okay, so overall we brought four components together. In five steps we made this advanced intermediate and then we have this development and uh, ultimately the synthesis of the NACA mRNA. 
Now, when you finish a compound like that, and we really did finish it over and over again, the question was, what uh, do you do next? And the obvious structure that we were interested in was manzamine A. It's the bigger brother of, na of nacodamarin. It has a, a much more compli complicated structure. And one of the subtleties uh, for people interested in synthesis is the bond that links that, that, carbon, th oops, that carbon there to that carbon there. It's, a, it's an umpalong um, strategy that's required for that. We have this obviously this heterocycle at the top that needs to be dealt with as well. In terms of biology, this thing's quite special actually. So it does kill bad cells. So it uh, inhibits uh, P388 mouse leukemia cells. It's an effective anti-malarial. It's got anti-inflammatory properties. It's an uh, anti-insecticide. It's, an, it's a fungicide. It inhibits uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. It, it almost inhibits everything. And uh, before we started, Winkler and Martin had uh, two syntheses, again, reasonably steppy, but then Fukuyama came more recently with a much longer route. Uh, we believed overall, again, we could put some downward pressure on that, on that step count. Now, I haven't got time to go through the whole synthesis, but <coughs> if you think about it, our strategy was slightly different to the others in that they all had an aldehyde here and then condensed tryptamine to make this beta carboline. We wanted a triflate at this position because then we could start doing coupling reactions to bring in various heterocycles that would give us analogs that you could never get from the natural products. So this, was, this turned out to be our target. Uh, this comes back to a diketone and the diketone comes back to, if you think of this coming from a NEF reaction of a nitroalkane, you're opening up to a nitroalkane reacting with this carbonyl and then ultimately this unfolds into a Michael addition product with a, a nitromanic reaction. So there's a, a relationship with the previous synthesis and this opens up to these two lovely fragments here. This one we've already made. This one looks fairly simple. And I'm only going to show you a few steps, but it, basically this reaction between this pronucleophile and this nitroolefin, we could not catalyze that reaction. This is just, <laughs> just too inert. We had to use super stoichiometric base and crown ether to make a very reactive enolate. This would pile into the nitroolefin in good chemical yield in a 3 to 1 diastereomeric ratio in favor of the desired diastereomer, which was critical for the synthesis. Uh, and from here, um, this is about a year of work, maybe a year and a half. Boom. <laughs> we, got to, we got to here, this, this triflate. There was a couple of nice steps in there, but maybe another time. We got to this triflate here, and indeed, you could couple that to this stanane uh, using classic palladium zero couplings to give manzamine A in 50% yield. But the, the really exciting thing was then you could also take the same triflate and couple it with carbon monoxide under palladium catalysis with methanol to give methyl ursinate, which could be reduced to ursinol A, and also you could use tin hydride as a reductant in the palladium coupling and get ursinol A. Okay, so that was a five component coupling giving us this late stage uh, triflate, which turns out to be a very good platform for making various natural products. Okay. So <coughs> that was, that's the end of the deviation. Uh, let's carry on around the ring. So we did some manic reactions with um, malonates reacting with reactive imines. Uh, that goes very well. We looked at the use of orthobenzoquinone electrophiles. And if these are heavily substituted around the ring, you can make a new CO bond with, with ketoesters as pronucleophiles. If you use orthobenzoquinones, which are lightly substituted around the ring, you do a Michael addition into the para position, and this, when it, when it tautomerizes, you get a, a, a lovely way of making a new quat aromatic bond under metal-free catalysis with reasonable levels of enantiocontrol. We started looking at acrylic acid derivatives, so things like uh, ac acrylates, uh, and if they were activated on the carbonyl with a pyrolyl or a, a sulfur, type ester, a thiol ester, these would be okay in the reaction with ketoesters. We looked at aziridines as electrophiles, and it turns out that the bifunctional organocatalysts that I've mentioned are in ineffective, but phase transfer was, was very good, and we managed to, to punch a couple of papers there which were quite spectacular for making this quaternary bond to this ethylene amino group with very high levels of enantiocontrol, right? This was successful, but it did point to one of the limitations of bifunctional organocatalysis, which is simply sometimes the, um, if the reagents are low reactivity, okay, sometimes no reaction happens at all. It's easy to control the additions of pronucleophiles to say nitroolefins. These are very reactive electrophiles, but things like uh, aziridines, n not good at all. And it was something that got us uh, into a, an area of, of chemistry I want to tell you about now. 
it's basically about escaping the limits of bifunctional organocatalysis, the limits being the lack of reactivity with some relatively low energy, uh, well, relatively stable electrophiles and nucleophiles. So what we want to do is bring together various low reactivity electrophiles with pronucleophiles with a, with a catalyst or a catalyst system and do the addition reaction here with stereo control, which is, which is, which is excellent, right? So how do we get these uh, low reactivity electrophiles pumped up? And the, the obvious thing to us was to combine organocatalysis to give us substrate activation uh, and organization with transition metal catalysis to give us a, a boost in reactivity. Now, we started these projects in 2006, 2005. It turns out other groups were also starting projects then, and, and the field opened up. So I should pay respect to uh, workers such as um, Cordova, uh, List, uh, Dean Tost, Crichet, uh, and a few others as well, who, who published before us. But we were there early. This, this idea is quite general, and it's, it's very broadly applicable. And the way we wanted to, to do this was to uh, basically remove the organocatalysis and replace that with, a, with effectively a transition metal iron linked to our Bronsted base. So <clears throat> you can come up with all sorts of designs for this. And by the way, this, this field, the Bronsted base Lewis acid catalysis, has been done for a long time. Shibazaki has been here for at least two decades where he has Bronsted basic character and Lewis acidity character in his catalyst. However, usually in his designs, they use multidentate ligands to hold the metal ion in place. And the problem with multidentate ligands is it restricts your design and it restricts your synthesis, actually. It, it makes things slightly more challenging. We wanted a looser approach, which was show, it is shown in this box. So you have a hard base and a soft ligand. This will do nothing in the reaction of interest. <laughs> Very nice, uh, and we can have a fully substituted carbon. So, what we're making effectively 
very advanced amino acid derivatives in very simple Gaussian transformations.